everybody, welcome to Drawing with Paolo. Today we're going to draw our first colored drawing. So, we're going to draw Colossus, or Colossus today from X-Men. And Colossus is this real bulky, metallic guy. He's the powerhouse behind the X-Men. And he's one of my favorite X-Men characters. A lot of people will say they love Wolverine. I love Colossus. Uh, Russian descent and so on. Anyway, the whole idea here is we're going to use a three-step process. We're going to start penciling, as I'm doing now, and if you've been following me since 2010, then you know that I always like to break down my characters into basic shapes and whatnot. For today, because I want to do this drawing under an hour, uh, draw ink and color, we're going to do it quickly without doing, without showing you what the basic shapes are. So I'm just going to draw this out as quickly as I can and put in his, his uh, body here so you can see he has this power pose um, and then we're going to ink this and then we're going to color it and I know in the past I kept saying that I don't want to do color pictures or color drawings because it forces people to have additional tools that they may not have at home today I really feel like coloring I haven't done it in a long time and you know I'm going to be very blatant with you I haven't colored in a while so we're going to practice this in front of the camera and I'll, I'm sort of like just showing you as I go along. And who knows if this is, is successful and people like it, we might make uh, more. So we're going to block this in and erase the lines we don't need. Um, there's a few things we can do in, in these types of drawings. Is we can put in all the detail that we need by pencil first, like everything we want, every line, every shading, you know, everything that we want to put in our drawing we can do and then ink everything. The other way is we can add a bit of lines, like I'm going to do today. I'm going to put a few details in there, but I'm not going to shade it at all. I'll do that with coloring later on. And then I'm going to ink it, then color it. And another possibility is that we actually just block in a few shapes, as I'm doing now, and then uh, finish the whole drawing with ink. Um, I'm going to go halfway here. I'm going to put a, a bit of detail in here and then we're going to ink it. I think it's fair for you to be able to draw it correctly and, and use the pencil where you can erase and then as you get better you can add fewer lines and, and feel more confident in using your ink and, and just adding the details with your ink. So let's draw his right hand here and here are his fingers, his palm, here are the knuckles, going all the way down to the forearm here and Colossus is really cool. Colossus has a uh, costume there's I don't know how recent it is but I really like this one yellow red uh, as it's customary for Colossus since I've been reading X-Men he's always been sort of a yellow or a red or something like that or a combination of the two and I know some people out there are saying well I really like Wolverine and yeah sure you can love Wolverine all you like uh, Wolverine is a really cool character those claws popping out of his hands um, and that snicked sound you know uh, but I really like Colossus he's an artist I don't know if you guys knew that, but he uh, he draws, and uh, he's super powerful, and he's he's uh, gentle, so uh, it's pretty cool. I really like him as a character. I'd, I'd like to see him more often, or see him uh, display his powers more frequently. But you know, he's not he's not the most popular, I would have to say. But he looks pretty outstanding. So let's add a few more details here to his uh, body. So we're gonna add his uh, X Men logo. I played hockey for uh, a bunch of years and at one point I was playing like in a garage league where we could just play uh, four on four, five on five against other people and, and uh, I decided to uh, paint an X-Men logo on my uh, hockey jersey. It was pretty cool. I felt like super strong because of it, <laughs> if you believe that. Uh, but no, I did actually do the logo. I don't know about the super strong part. I was a pretty good defenseman, I think, if you'd ask some of my friends. They would say I was a pretty good defenseman. So let's work on uh, Colossus's suit here. So he's got a line coming down to show his powerful arms. Um, and then he's got his chest muscles, like so his pectoral muscles come down this way like this. And there we go. And then we're going to add a few uh, lines here to demonstrate the thickness of his pecs. All right, like just like that. And each one of these lines we're going to have to highlight or uh, outline later on with, with ink. So we're going to add some of these really cool things. And we're going to try to keep this drawing under under an hour, probably about 50 minutes or so. That's not 15, it is 50. <clears throat> then you guys control the video, so 
if you want to speed the process along or do this on a few hours different you know or different days just you can watch the first part which is the penciling part and then uh, come back another time and watch the the inking part and then come back another time and watch the whole coloring part but because I've been adding a lot of stuff to YouTube I'm allowed to put about an hour's worth of video and probably even more than that by now so we're gonna add a few uh, lines here for suit and then uh, his pectoral uh, rather his trapezius here was a little bit too low compared to his right side and the right side is still a little bit too high so I'm going to erase that later on. Uh, I'm going to add more details to his head and face here um, after that. Let's uh, put in his legs here that are powerful legs and his bicep like this. And there goes his elbow over here and then a line that attaches his tricep and uh, of course his face. We need to work on a face here. So this is the middle line right there that separates the, the face. The eyes should go right on that horizontal line in the middle of the face. Here's his jawline, his chin, his cheek, his ear, just like that. Uh, Colossus has got sort of a flat top haircut, sort of like a brush cut. And when he becomes a, his steel version, he's got a nice flat head. The eyes do have to go on that horizontal line like this, and then his nose come down, comes down from the corner of his eyes like this. And then we're going to give him some eyebrows, just like that. One and two. And then we're going to add a few nostril details. And then, of course, his mouth. I'm not smiling or anything, just the... There you go, a very straightforward mouth with a bottom lip. Retrace his jawline a little bit. Now you see there really is no need to do what I'm doing, which is to retrace the the outline of this drawing because I'm going to do that, solidify that with my ink later on. But I want you to have a really good idea of of the, of the drawing that we're doing today. As you go on, as you get you know really good at it, you don't have to retrace anything. You can just block in a few details and then do everything else by ink. But um, it takes a lot of practice, and that's something that's important to know. Is that a lot of people write to me and say, "Hey, you know what? I'd really be, I'd really like to be as good as you." Now, you know, I don't consider them, I don't consider them amazing or anything, but um, I've got here, I've got to this level of of drawing because I've been practicing a lot. You didn't come to me in a day, you know. So you guys have to practice this over and over again. You have to draw every day if you want to get good at it. It's not something you just download, you know. Watch and hey, I know how to do it now. Um, it is true that some people have an innate skill that they, they can, you know, they're born and they know how to draw. But everybody can learn how to draw. The only thing is that you need to have time to practice. So sit down with a pencil and paper and just draw whatever you see and get good at it. The only way you can get good at it is doing it. The example here is sit on a bike and pedal. You know, you can't learn to ride a bike without riding a bike. Oh yeah, I'm going to learn to ride a bike. Uh, but I'm not going to ride a bike, and I know how to ride a bike. That doesn't make any sense, in a few ways. <laughs> but what I mean, though, is that you need to practice. So get your pencil and paper and pull it out every day, and, and just draw that pencil, draw with a pencil on that paper. Go crazy and have fun. The whole point is have fun, be creative, do whatever you want. Now, some people see. Some people might think that this Colossus isn't a really good one, or he's too small or too big or whatever. Um, I'm draw this is my drawing, so I'm drawing what I want to do, I'm drawing what I, want, I see in my mind, what I feel like drawing, and sometimes it doesn't always come out like I, I want it to, but I'm still happy with it, it's my drawing, and I get to showcase it here on YouTube, and you guys can get to learn from my mistakes, which is great. Alright, so here's his uh, costume details, what I really like about his costume is that they're like uh, stitch lines, which make the contour lines of his costume a little bit thicker. Gives a little bit more detail. It's a lot of fun. There you go. Add a bit more detail to his X logo here. Drawing circles isn't very easy for everyone, but you know, with practice, practice makes permanent. Some people say practice makes perfect, but I like to think that it stays with you. The more you practice, the longer it stays with you, right? So. Sort of like a permanent marker. 
that you write onto your brain with when you practice and practice and practice over and over again. Uh, if you want different ideas for Colossus's costume, Colossus's Colossus Colossus's Colossus's costume, go onto the internet, search for Marvel Colossus or uh, Pyotr Nikolaevich Rasputin. Um, and you'll find different images for Colossus, and then you can draw the one that you like, or you can draw his costume the way you want. The whole idea here is to, you know, you don't have to draw the exact same costume as mine, so you can do whatever you want, as long as, long as you get the main understanding of what I'm doing here. And today is especially just to see the three-step process of penciling, inking, and then uh, coloring. And see this trap muscle here has to be a little bit lower here. There you go. I think it's too wide on the right side, but you know, whatever. I don't feel like redrawing all of this, so his right side seems a little bit wider than his left, but you know, we'll, we'll keep it that way. I don't really mind. Okay, add a few reflections to his arms. Like this, so the light is really reflective. This is like a very chrome kind of metal that he's got. That'd be awesome to transform into organic steel. That'd be like crazy. If there was a power I'd like to have, that would be one of them for sure. Little uh, lines here on his legs for the difference in color. So we're going to be using yellows and reds today. And I'm going to be using what we call Copic markers. Uh, Copic are nice felt pens. One end is pointed, the other end is flat, chiseled. And uh, But you can use, you know, wood pencils, coloring pencils, uh, wax crayons, markers or felt markers that you have at home. It doesn't really matter. You use what you have. You don't need to go out and get Copics, which are rather expensive. I would say about $7 Canadian each. Um, but you can also get them on Amazon. You can get them in a pack of uh, a bunch, like 36 or... Uh, 70 some odd pens for but it's around 300 bucks or so but you can check those out and what i like about the copic markers is that they're refillable so once the, you run out of ink you just get yourself a bottle and a bottle of ink and refill it instead of getting a whole new pen and trashing it here are his armored lines in his arms so i'm going to trace those in just to give you an idea of how we're going to do these in ink later on but i may not actually um keep those i'm going to re probably erase them and and draw them back in with the ink with my pen. I'll combine two things. I'll combine my Copic felt to trace and my uh, pen as well to make thinner lines like these ones for his for his fingers. You can see the nice little uh, separations there and I, I'm curving this line so that it follows the path of his fingers, right? His fingers are curved and so I can't just draw a straight line across the finger to make his metal part. I really need to, just like here with the bicep, I need to curve the line so that it looks like it's following the contour of his body. It makes it more realistic. When we're kids, what we do is we just draw a straight line and it makes everything look flat. The trick here is to trick the eye and make everything look like it's curved and following a real pattern, a 3D pattern. Three dimensions. Height width and depth. Say that three times quick. All right, these finger lines here too. And then we're going to curve them this way. Well, anyway, I should, could, should have curved them the other way, but it doesn't really matter. I'll fix that later on when I ink everything up. And we're just gonna add a few more lines here, and then it's inking time. So, it's time to go ahead and grab that Copic marker and start tracing the contours. And okay, so why Copic markers? The co Copic marker remind me of my sable hair brush. I used to use a sable hair brush, which is just a, a paintbrush, very thin, like a three or a two uh, numbered brush, and dip it, dip it in India ink, and then trace or contour my drawing. Now that would take a long time because every you know two or three pencil or, or rather uh, paintbrush strokes I'd have to dip it in India ink and trace again and so on and so forth. These guys are loaded with ink and all I need to do is trace around. 
And what's cool about these markers is that the tip is flimsy uh, in the sense that it, I mean it's very uh, soft. So I can work it like a, a brush. I, if I press very lightly, I can make very thin lines. And then if I press press more, uh, put more pressure on the brush, then I'll make a thicker line. And that modulates the line thickness, which is really cool in contours and in, in drawing. And you'll see that in my face here, I've got very deta very uh, small details. And it's up to me to keep those lines as thin as possible. So I'm just using the very tip of that brush, of that felt tip. And then if I want to, I can just apply a bit more pressure and make the line a little bit thicker. So it makes something pretty cool. We'll see that later on in the body. But for the lower lip here, I need to make a very thin line. Same thing for his hair contour line here, Oopa, like that. Some thickness here too. And there you go. And in a lot of cases, what I'm going to do with this uh, pen is to contour my drawing, but also fix the things that I didn't like originally with the pencil. So the lines that I didn't like, I can then retrace them differently and just go with a different form of line than I had with the pencil before. All right, this is what the tip looks like. It's a little bit of a pointed tip. It's soft, so I can play around. It's sort of uh, very uh, flexible. And you'll see here I can make that line thin, like this. And then here for the shoulder, I'll press and release, press, release, and one third time, press and release. And you can see the line, how it changes, the thickness of the line changes. For the costume, I want to keep the line nice and thin. So it looks like a costume line and not so much like a body part. Keep that nice and thin and side by side like that. Yep. From the bottom here, yep. There you go. What I'd really like to be doing right now is turning my piece of paper. Usually when I draw and I'm not filming, I will be rotating my piece of paper uh, to make it easier to draw. And here we're going to make this a thicker line and thinner. Thicker, thinner, there you go. Uh, and so at home, please do rotate your piece of paper so that it's easier for you to draw. I'm, I'm not rotating it just so that I can keep it uh, horizontal to the camera so it's not too disturbing for you at home. So you can see what I'm doing throughout. Uh, but Ordinarily, if I'm not filming, I'm actually just turning that paper like crazy to, to get a better angle on how to draw. And I wish I could be doing that right now because <laughs> inking is very difficult without moving that paper around at all. Okay, so what's the logic to the thin line and thick line in inking? The whole idea here is that when the light hits the body part, so let's say the top of, his, of Colossus's head, then you want to put in a very thin line. The bottom here of his forearm will be thicker because that represents sort of like the shadow part and the top of his forearm will be thinner. So the top of the forearm, the top here of the trapezius muscle is a, a thin line and even on this costume here, very thin. But when we get to body parts or parts of the drawing that are sort of hidden from the light in the darkness, then we'll make the, light th uh, the line thicker. This is really tough to Get that line to follow the other one and not draw right on top of it again. Let's do that logo here. And you know, those circles are require me to stop talking. <laughs> they use too much brain power. I'm concentrating to. Okay, this line has to be really close but not overlap. There you go. I did it. One. Real thin, real close. Two. All right. Um, to me, inking is sort of like walking a tightrope. You never know if you're going to fall off. So in this case, I'm here I am, you know, this feels like I'm live because uh, I never know if I'm going to get the job done correctly. I don't know if I'm going to smudge it, if my, my line is going to overlap another line, if I'm, my palm is going to pull some ink across my piece of paper. I decided that, you know, whatever happens, happens, and I publish it to YouTube anyway. So we'll see how this goes. Well, this will be a little bit tricky because the triangle is easy, but this bottom line, yep, I need to keep it away from the outside contour, like this. That's good. So far, so good. Last curve here. Yeah. Anyway, I sort of overlapped it, but that's all right. We'll keep going. No stopping me now. This line has to be coming down this way. Back up that way. The only thing I'm not really used to these 
uh, Copic markers is that they're sort of not round, they're flat and round. It's sort of strange drawing with them. I have a hard time finding a correct position holding them, but I guess I'll get used to that eventually. I got them for my birthday, and so they're sort of they're sort of new to me. I've never used these before, but I really like them. I'm lazy, so I don't like having to dip a pen, uh, a brush, in ink all the time. Not anymore, anyway. Especially with these guys that exist now, it's pretty cool. All right, so my drawing is coming along. I'm starting to like it pretty much. I hope you're liking it too. The whole point here, anyway, is the fact that I enjoy drawing and I enjoy um, creating these pictures for you. And some of the people out there in YouTube land don't like my drawings. And you know what? I don't really care. Um, here's something that I need to give you as a bit of information. If people tell you, I really love your drawing, okay, ask them this. What do you love about my drawing? The only way you can get better at something is that you learn why the drawing is good. If you know why the drawing is good, you will continue drawing it in that way. If they tell you, this drawing sucks, then okay, tell them once again, why does this drawing suck? I'd like to know why you don't like it. That way I won't reproduce what I did that you don't like. And they need to be specific. If they're not specific, then it's bogus information. If they can say, yeah, this drawing sucks, and they can't tell you why, that's mainly because they're probably jealous and their information isn't worth a crap. So don't care about what they say if it's not really good detailed information about why they don't like your drawing. So that's something that's vital to you. And don't take it to heart. Don't take it you know, as if it's something that's meant to hurt you. If they don't like your drawing and they're not explaining why, then who cares? Move on, you know. This drawing isn't the perfect one. The one, this Colossus is nice but it's not my favorite one, it's not my best one so far. And you know what? The whole point is I'm building experience as I'm drawing this, and the more experience I pack into my life, the better I become. And that's what I want to do, you know? So what if the right arm is bigger than the left arm and so on? I don't care. I'm having fun, and we're having fun together, right? That's what counts. We worry too much about what other people think about our drawings and ourselves and what we look like. All that stuff is useless and redundant. And well, not redundant, but anyway. I'm sure you get the idea. Okay, so we're coming up to where the drawing, I feel, is pretty much totally traced. We're just going to finish the right arm here. Some people might say, but Paolo, that's his left arm. And yes, you're right. This would be Colossus's left arm. But that's his. if you're looking at through the picture, through the camera here, that's his right hand. I can't tell you... I'm tracing his left hand because people say that's not his left hand, it's the right hand. Yes, if I'm looking at it, it's the right side of the camera. So we're done now. So we're completed. Now we need to erase the foundation lines just like this. Whoop And then one more time here. Whoop And then we'll continue tracing. I'm using now a, a thin Copic. It's like a outliner, multi-liner, thin liner. Sort of still has a felt tip. It's not a ball pen. And I can actually trace nice little thin lines with this. I, I dare go with this where I didn't get it, dare go with the other one, which has a thicker line no matter what. This one I can make really thin lines, add a few more details, and then I'll swap back once in a while to my other one. Uh, but for example, the reflections on his arms here, like on the chrome, I can use a nice thin marker and, and draw those along. Now, of course, if you want to learn how to draw chrome, because his arms are chromey, uh, look around your house and you'll find a lot of things that are metallic or reflective. One thing for sure, most door handles in a house of your room, of the, the uh, bathroom, or you know, just look at the door handles. Most door handles are metallic and those are a great way of learning how to draw uh, chrome and metal. So Colossus's arms, I have a hard time with that. It, Colossus's, Colossus's arms are made of metal and therefore reflect his environment. And the idea here is we need to reproduce that uh, effect on our paper. Now a lot of these are like these curves like this. And this is where a nice bright light reflects on that chrome and makes it look realistic. Now keep in mind we're going to be coloring this so 
part of the job is adding black lines in there, but the other part of the job will be to color it in and make it more realistic. And of course, add all those other little extra details in there with the color. So I'm going to add his lines here to his lip, just like that. And while you're watching this, because of course there's a, a lot of detail in his face, or very tight, very small, thin detail, you may want to go full screen on your YouTube channel, on my YouTube channel here, while you're watching. Hit that full screen button so that you can see the detail in his head here. Add a little bit of a reflection line here underneath his eye. And his chin, like that, just a little bit of a dimple on his chin. Maybe a reflection on his jaw bone here, just like that. And then we're going to add the, all those metallic lines we made earlier for his fingers. I didn't like them very much, so I'm going to retrace them. Like go live right here, um, right on his hand with my uh, Copic outliner. I'm not afraid, you know. <laughs> I just go straight like that, curving the lines. And the lines need to contour his body, right? As I said earlier. And you saw me do it with pen, uh, with a pencil, so I'll fast forward through this. Give it two lines like that, two lines like that, and then away we go. If you just want to put one in there, that's fine. You know, you do what you want to do. You don't have to do the exact same drawing as mine, you know. Although, if you want to, go ahead. It's your life. You decide. Choice. Life is about choice. Trace this. Curve that. Curve that. All right, we're approaching the color stage, folks. About another half hour or so, and we'll, this drawing will be complete. Curve this, follow the contour lines of his body, right? Be imaginative, these are deltoids. His shoulder muscles have three or four lines in there. I need to curve those uh, metallic lines. Same thing here, that's the curve, follow the shoulder line like that. Look at that, there we go. Speed it up. Here these lines are just nice straight lines here. Well not straight, but they're curved and they're singular, not duplicated. And I think I'm gonna add the same shape here that we can barely see on this side and trace those in with the other marker after, like that. Yeah, awesome. You see I didn't need pencil lines there, I could just do it myself. Add those in with the marker. And I know a few artists that will just use the pencil to sort of block in shapes and whatnot, and then they'll draw everything with the marker, like uh, Mark Silvestri, for example. Mark Silvestri will uh, just go with the pencil and then lightly with the pencil and then do everything with the, his Copic markers. All right, so as I said earlier, we're going to be using three different colors for a suit. I'm going to use a light pink, or a, a, yeah, a pink essentially, to do the light reflection on a suit. And we're just going to color this in like that. And later on, we're going to be using a, a let's say, basic red, the color of his suit, really, to color everything else in. And we're going to use a dark red to do his, the shading. So everywhere the light has a highlight, or everywhere there's a highlight on his suit, I'm going to be using this lighter pink. And just like sort of imagining, okay, if the light is coming from the top, where would it hit it on the suit? And where would I want to use this light pink here? And then I'm going to use this basic red. And that's the color of his suit ordinarily. And I'm going to just draw this in and sort of mash it into that pink. I'm going to make sort of like a gradient here and color that in. And once in a while, I'm going to speed it up just because I'm pretty sure you know how to color this part in at home. Okay, you don't need to use Copic markers. As I said earlier, you can use uh, wood, wood uh, color pencils, you can use wax crayons, you can use regular Crayola markers, and just go nuts. Color this stuff. If you have none of this, no problems. Just draw with your pencil, color with your pencil. That is great too. You don't need to have tons of tools to become an artist. All right, I'm going to color this in real quick here, like that, making sure to remain, you know, to keep some of that pink in there. And once again, when I'm coloring, I need to think about that, the shape of what I'm coloring. And as I'm coloring along, here I'll add a little reflection here. I think there might be a little light reflection coming from the bottom. 
we need to think about that contour like what's the is the shape a cylinder is the shape a flat is it a square and then how is that going to affect my color and think of it look at the wall in the room you're in right now and you'll see that the wall is mainly colored in one basic color however it changes color as it moves along the wall color modulates depending on the light and we have to reproduce that effect here and that's why now i'm going to use this dark red and make every bottom part or the shaded part in this nice dark red to modulate the color and I may want to use even five different tones of red or six different tones of red sadly I only have three but in this case you may want to add different lines and shadings and colors in there to have a lot of fun with that go crazy with color color is awesome all right we're gonna put paint the X here it's gonna be a light gray well and darkish gray and then take my darker gray and add a few more dark lines in here I want to keep some light parts to it so I'm going to just color across like a little ref like let's say a reflection in his logo like that and le leave some light gray in there and it's pretty cool like that there we go a little bit more here this way and that way and then back to the dark red all right no, I forgot a line. That line's going to have to be a lighter red, but then I'm going to use the chiseled edge and just pull lines across to darken that real quickly. And then when I get closer to the edge, I want to use the, the felt tip that is flexible. And here I'll pull lines across to sort of create that um, sort of gradient effect and a little reflective area and this light pink here to create that reflection in his forearm. Use a dark red again to move that around and make that sort of like metallic looking color around this section here and, and do this side too. And I'm just using creative license, you know. How do you know where to go? I just feel like it should go there and I put it there, you know. How do you feel like? Sort of like this clothes here. These clothes I need to I don't want to just do straight lines. There have to be bumps and folds and things. So that's what I color in. I imagine that this has to be like a, there's a bump here. This side is dark and that side isn't. So look, see, this side is dark. Why is it dark? Well, because I want it to be. It's really just, <laughs> that's the answer. Because I want it to be. That's what's so fun about drawing. I can't go outside and say, I want the sky to be purple today. That's not going to work. However, in my drawing, if I want my sky to be purple, you better believe it's going to be purple. So we're going to use this light yellow and do as we did with the red, add in everywhere the light hits really brightly on his costume. Put this light yellow first. What are you going to do under his head, under his neck, even though that's going to be a darker part later on? And of course, the top of his uh, chest muscles, but I'm even going to leave like a little light white reflection in there too. I'm going to speed that up a little bit for you. And then everywhere else on the back of his gloves here, or whatever those are, those gauntlets, a little bit, a little light yellow. Same thing on his left hand here. Um, his abdominal muscles, the top part will be a light yellow. Same for these ones down here. And the top of his pants, in light yellow. Just like this and once again I'm just you know figuring out where the light would hit his suit and paint that in or color that in this line should be oh wait a minute I think that line is red yeah this line is yellow the other line is red we'll we'll color that in afterwards I'll go get that pen afterwards and come back here there you go yeah, that's better all right nice and yellow light yellow we're going to be using three yellows today. Color that in like this. Another side here too. Everything that I'm leaving white to a certain degree will become that darker yellow shade. His midsection, by the way, is black or dark gray, so we're not going to color that in yet. We'll, we'll do that later on. All right, a light blue. I think there should be a reflection of the sky on his forehead, on his... Uh, his hair and we'll do this top part a dark gray but not the blackest gray I've got the thickness of his hair will be a darker gray so we'll 
fill that in and then get a darker pen and make that a little bit darker here. I got a nice little contrast going there, very nice. The front of his hair here will be nice and black as it's to represent the thickness of his hair. There we go. And then here, black, when it's shading, and here too, we'll shade that in with a nice dark red. And then use our secondary yellow and put some darker lines here. So this should be the primary color of a suit. There we go, using the chiseled edge here to fill that in. I'm going to use the pen, uh, the brush edge to add a few muscle lines. So press and pull, press and pull. And as you press and pull, you're also releasing the pressure on the pencil, or on the brush. I'm all mixed up. Pencil, brush, uh, marker, I don't know what to say anymore. That's why I never colored before, because I mix up all my words. Pull lines across like this, all the way up, make a nice little gradient effect. Gradient. Look at that. All right, cool. Do the side too, and not to forget his abdominal muscles, same thing, fill that in. We'll use then a, something close to an orange later on to uh, to uh, color in his body parts there, his, his, his uh, suit. The darker part of his suit will be a, a sort of an orange. Alright, color this in to the with that secondary yellow. I would like to salute those that are still with us after 37 minutes of video. I really appreciate you guys being here and enjoying this and having fun coloring this with us. And uh, requires patience. And I'm not, no, I don't know if this one's going to be watched a lot. First of all, it's not my best drawing. And second of all, it's a long one. But uh, I hope you're there and I hope you're enjoying this. I do these to try to make you guys better at home and learn new techniques every time. Uh, I've been away for a bit and it's time to uh, address something new in 2015. 2015 is what brings color. This world needs color. And I mean that in every way. There we go, let's color that in. And uh, what's fun about these uh, markers is that if I go over an area that I've colored already, it'll, with the same color, it'll still make it darker. Just like I'm retracing on top of something I've traced before, and it'll make it like a little bit darker, and it's cool. It's as if I had a third pen already, or a third marker already, but um, it's the same color as before. I'm going to use an orange later on to add a third thickness, third color to this, but for the moment, it's the exact same yellow. Bottom like that, there we go. Add a few more. And another layer here. I think that'll help a little bit here under the head. Okay. Do that same trick here too. Okay, let's use, we're gonna use another color soon. So this light, lighter gray is to create the reflection in the chrome and we're going to start doing the chrome so for chrome to work and for it to look really good you need to leave white if you over color your character you're going to end up with black arms and a black face and for it to look really metallic you need to make sure that you're leaving a lot of white in there so be careful this is once again that tightrope act if we go too far we can't go back so be careful, tread carefully, tread lightly. Add another little lighter gray here. And that color maybe this side of the head, which is just a little bit lighter, so you'll see a contrast there. A little thin line like this. Maybe this chin or cheekbone here, cheek rather. The bottom of the lip here. That chin as well. His ear. Inside of the ear, a little bit darker, and his arms. So all those lines that I traced earlier with the light, lighter pen or the thinner pen, I can now color in with this light gray. But remember, we want to leave some white in there 
so that it really looks like it's a highlight. It's a light highlight. And that's how we want, we're going to make it a successful drawing, only if we can complete this arm properly by not coloring it too much. This side like that, but see how I'm leaving the white there? That's important. So this is the first kind of gray, and then we're going to put in another gray later on. There we go, color this in. I can't forget that. Make that all nice, a light tone of gray. The bottom part of his fingers will be gray as well, because that's sort of like in the shade. Sort of a shadow here, and color that in. His thumb as well, his small finger here. Back side of his hand. Remember to leave some white. I'm going to work on his right arm here, same thing. This whole part here should be the same unified gray tone anyway. And not too far up. Leave some white there at the top. Just like this. And then the other half. It's the top, most top part of his arm here. The uppermost part. His fingers, the left side of his fingers will be dark. Like this. You want to be careful. Keep some white. Well, look, you know, like I, I keep telling you, do what the hell you want whatever the heck you want and um, and then I'm telling you not to do this and not to do that but you do what you want this here I'm going to use a nice darker gray and add more of that reflective material look to his arm thinner line here just to give it a bit of contrast all the way up and then maybe around closer to the edge of the sh shoulder but each piece I'm sort of breaking off like that maybe a secondary line here and I'm going to color this edge of the bicep and then that circle inside the bicep I'll color that in fully later on do the same thing on the right arm here using that nice darker gray of course the tricep area here needs to be totally dark it's behind there so it's normal to push that back in the background I'm going to add a few more darker lines to the fingers. Look at that. And then we'll add maybe a, even a little bit of blue in there to uh, demonstrate that the environment is reflecting off his body. That'd be pretty cool. And of course his palm, not his palm, but the back of his hand should be dark. And the bottom of his thumb here. Thin line there. There we go. And this part of this costume is a dark gray. So we'll use this uh, middle tone gray like this and go over some parts and leaving some parts lighter and darker and then use a darker gray to add the 3D element, a little bit of a thickness there to the bottom part of his abs. And be careful not to go over the yellow. It sounded like a song. Be careful not to go over the yellow. There we go. And a little bit of a line of a light blue here. It's like the sky is reflecting, it, reflecting in his armor. I'd love to be able to transform into metal armor. That'd be like freaking awesome. Then again, you ask yourself, then what would you do? Walk around town, you know. And at that point, I'd probably have to give myself a truck because I'd weigh so heavy. This uh, Colossus guy is in a, a power class of, uh, it's called 100. Uh, and that means uh, he's got class 100, which means he can lift 100 tons. He used to be a class 70. And now he's a class 100. He's gained power since he's become the juggernaut. Yep, you know, if you're not a comic book fan, then you don't know what I'm talking about. And the only reason why I know that is because I've reread some stuff on, let's say, Wikipedia or Marvel.com as I want to get reacquainted with my uh, friend here, this metallic friend of mine. And now with the darker uh, marker, the one that I used for outlining earlier, I'm going to retrace some lines and add some darker lines in there. 
Actually, this is not really a black. It's sort of like a dark gray. I think I should go pick up a black. Black would be nice. Okay, coloring the bottom here. Adding just a little bit of black, but leaving in that uh, line in his armor is pretty cool. Make it blacker here underneath his eyes. Make it a bit more menacing. That's it. Cool. And it's coming along well. And then this is the third color to his suit. Sort of an orangey color. I have to be careful here not to make it all orange. I want to leave some of the lighter yellow in there. And as I said earlier, some people may use like five different, different yellows, seven different yellows, and even put a bit of purple in the yellow because purple is the opposite of yellow and, and in shading or shadows, shadows should represent the opposite color in a lot of cases. I just don't feel like going there right now. Excuses. <laughs> but that's what, that's what you could do if you look at paintings, uh, master paintings, you'll see that they use the opposite color, the what we call complementary color, inside the uh, color you're using to really complement it in the shading. So that's pretty cool. So look, look, go look up Color Wheel online, or maybe one day I'll give you guys a Color Wheel course or, um, or even write a book about it. But uh, the opposite of green is red. The opposite of yellow is purple. The opposite, opposite of blue is orange. And you need to make those things work together. Well, that being said, what we'll do later on is we'll color the background here a blue, and you'll see it nice pop out because we're using orange on uh, Colossus' suit here. So what I did earlier is I, I um, traced black, um, and then I colored over it, so my black sort of paled and fizzled out a little bit. So with my black marker here, I'm going to, uh, well, it's a dark gray, anyway, but I'm going to retrace some of those lines to give my contour lines a little bit more life because some of it sort of faded with that yellow and that gray, so I'll retrace some of the lines. Not all of them, of course, but here this bottom line should be darker, and the contour line here should be darker as well. And then, of course, this fold here is sort of like grayed out, so I'm going to retrace that a little bit. There we go. It looks good. If you don't feel like doing that, you don't have to. If you feel like doing it, then you can. You know. Let me trace that line there. Maybe we'll pull some horizontal lines there later on to give it some. Uh, here, let's do that now. We'll we'll put some horizontal lines like this to give it a bit of a shading effect. Cross hatching. Well, this is just hatching. Hatch, 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 hatch. Do the same here by the neck muscles. Hey folks, we're nearly done. We are approaching the end of this image. Um, it hasn't been too bad. We, we started with pencil, we inked it, we erased the pencil, and then we colored it. And so far so good. Not bad. An hour for this? It's pretty good. And next time we'll try to make it even faster. The next drawing, we'll draw another uh, character or whatever and, and we'll try to do the three steps again and and uh, try to get better at it. How's that? And I really feel like coloring in a uh, background there. It's a nice background color, but I finished a few details here in the legs. Chaining there. Put some hatching in here. Here too. You know he's been battling with this suit, so his suit is sort of worn and torn. You can't uh, you can't be battling super villains and think that your costume would be nice and sexy throughout the whole thing. It's impossible, so we need to roughen this up a little bit. Give him a few uh, cuts and bruises. Here's that nice little blue um, that I want to use. And all I'm going to do is pull diagonal lines across here behind there. Being careful not to go over those previous colors. I'm going to speed that up. You know how to do this. You know how to do this. Come on. There we go. I'm going to go over the, some of these colors again to give it a little bit more darker shade. There you go. Look at that. 
All right. Uh, use the the brush tip and then go over the closer parts to his body to make it a little bit thicker, getting rid of the white there a little bit. You can still see the white through the marker, and I want to get rid of some of that, make it a little bit uh, more opaque here in the corner, close to his around of his face, this side here of the trap muscle too, making sure not to go into the yellow. I'm going to get a green here in this corner too. And then I'm going to use a darker blue. But first, don't forget the color between his legs. You should be able to make that blue too. Okay, there's a little bit darker blue. That being said, guys, look, I really hope you enjoyed doing this three-step process, Colossus. And, uh, you know, hey, send them over to me. Have a great week. See you in the next episode of Drawing with Paolo. This is 2015. Take care, guys. See you next time. Have fun. See you soon.